Hi, I can answer both your questions pretty easily, and I'm gonna. Um, I'm actually am an expert. My education is in philosophy of science, and so I'm pretty well versed in falsifiability and science in general. Uh, I've read a lot of Popper. And I'm not actually a Popperian. I'm actually more of a logical positivist in that sort of area, but I'm very familiar with Popper, shall we say. The so you, you say that life, by definition, has DNA. There are some biologists who will argue that, but there are actually a lot of other people who will argue otherwise. In particular, right now, there's actually a lot of uh, talk about artificial intelligence. We're right on the edge of creating artificial intelligence, and uh, there have been studies in countries like England, most recently that I've read about, that talk about the rights that artificial intelligence will have, and Morally, they say, you know, artificial intelligence is going to be alive, and so we're going to have to accord it the same sort of rights we give to human-style biological life, meaning things like health plans and retirement benefits. <laughs> no joke. Serious. I mean, England, in fact, wrote a report about this, uh, because it's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. So, most people, in fact, do not think that life has to have DNA. Uh, and also, of course, it would be falsifiable if you found some other form of life that scientists agreed was life that had DNA. I mean, like if aliens came down from the sky and they didn't have DNA. You'd say, aha, you know, they're clearly alive and they clearly uh, don't have DNA, therefore it's wrong. Uh, so, but there are some biologists, biologists here on Earth right now tend to define life as having DNA because that's what they work with. Even so, not universal. For instance, viruses and prions, which are really more complex proteins, and have no DNA, are they alive or not? A lot of biologists would say yes, viruses and prions are in fact alive. They have all the necessary preconditions of life. They reproduce, they eat, things like that. So uh, you're just actually wrong, largely speaking. There are some biologists who will say that all life must have DNA, but that's more to do their job, because that's the kind of life that they study. Uh, the larger scientific community is well aware that not all life has DNA and does not need DNA to be alive. And how natural selection is falsifiable, it would be falsifiable if you were able to demonstrate evolution without it. Um, which we might be doing, by the way. Things like genetic engineering and such are adapting life in a fashion that is not natural selection, it's something else. It's, but this does not mean that natural selection is wrong. Um, kind of like Newtonian mechanics are very applicable in kind of the immediate area with the things that you and I are likely to do in our everyday lives. But they don't really apply when you're talking about the very big, like galaxies and superclusters, or the very small, like parts of light, or not parts of light, light and electrons and parts of the atom and stuff like that. Uh, Newton's laws out the window, they break down. It doesn't mean they're wrong, it just means they are incomplete. And so too with natural selection being um, the mechanism of life changing. It is merely one of several potential ways that life changes. Another one being um, like eugenics programs, breeding programs, things like that. Not natural selection. We are changing life because we choose, we human beings choose to do it. The other thing is, is you seem to say that if, if something isn't falsifiable, shh, kick it out because it's not science. Wrong. Um, many things make science science and really the thing that most make science science is exception, accepted by the scientific community. Um, other things that relate to this are like the, the observational power of a given hy idea, hypothesis, or a theory, the, the observability, can you see it, how can you see it, uh, can you create experiments that are repeatable amongst it, uh, so is it verifiable? Um, and then, after all of that, you know, you also have falsifiability as one of the many criteria of science. So, even if these things weren't falsifiable, it doesn't mean that they aren't science. It just means that right now we can't falsify them. But in your particular case, both of the things are in fact falsifiable. Um, if you find life that does not have DNA, DNA being necessary for life is falsifiable. If you find a way to evolve something without natural selection, natural selection is also falsifiable. This is a staunch standard in common. So anyway, I hope I've answered both of your questions, and thank you. You should visit my website <laughs> at chrisbradleywriter.com, and I hope to see more of you.